Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. My name is Ferris Savetti, CEO of My Swim Pro, and I am joined by a special guest, Caitlin Sandino. Hey. What's going on? I'm excited to be here. Back in my old stomping grounds. Yeah, so we're in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and you're speaking about your new book, Golden Glow. Yes. Tell us about it. Yeah, so this just launched, what, like a month and a half ago. Um, after three years of a lot of work and reminiscing and memories and something that was on my bucket list for quite some time. Um, got to the point where, you know, I was writing down what I thought the chapters would be and what were significant moments in my life and what the premise would be and what the goal would be. And then I just didn't know where to go from there. And so uh, kind of like how life goes, it gets busy and things kind of get, you know, on the back burner and you're doing life. And then I was very involved in the 2016 Olympic trials and I was reconnected with Dan Diadonna and I met Dan when I was actually training here in Michigan because he covers a lot of the Michigan swimming and he approached me about hey I have an idea thinking about starting some books want to you know he's only written a book in the past about a baseball player he's very mm. passionate about baseball but obviously his loves in swimming are you interested and I was like you know what this is something I've wanted to do yeah. for quite some time yeah. so just the right people got into order and uh, we were going to self-publish but we had enough of a solid rough draft to kind of start shopping it out and it got picked up by a Roman in Lilyfield and it mm. kind of just took off from there and I've done a lot of local events this is the first one um, really outside of my hometown I mean mm. I did an event at Nationals in Palo Alto but to leave Southern California and be back in Ann Arbor. It's a blast for me to be here. Um, one of my best friends and her sister lives in Gross Point, so we get to stay with her and then come to Ann Arbor where I spent the last two years of my swimming career. So I'm excited to be here. Like shout out to Mike at Literati for having Woo. me. I'm so pumped. And tonight it's gonna just be like a laid back, exciting um, evening. And you know, it's always very humbling and surreal mm -hmm. to get this opportunity. Right on. So without sharing too many details. Give us sort of the overview of the book. Yeah, you know, um, honestly, the reason that the publishing company said that they enjoyed it and why they picked it up, of, mm -hmm. it's a book more than just swimming. I mean, obviously, my story is centered around swimming, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of the befores, the middles, the after that people are interested about. And um, I think it's really important that people hear about the not just the highs, but the lows mm -hmm. too, because I think that just relates to everybody in life. Uh, let it be that you are an athlete or mm -hmm. not an athlete, or, and just what my upbringing was like and what my parents were like and how they raised me and the relationship that I have with my family and the highs and lows going through college and then and then life after sports because I think that's a very predominant mm, totally. subject that gets talked about right now mm -hmm. that you know after NC2As or after the Olympics like what are athletes supposed to do yeah. so for me it talks about my journey and how involved I am with the Jesse Reese Foundation and how that was like a saving grace in my life and being able to make a difference and use my platform um, in a special way mm -hmm. so it's, it's kind of all-encompassing yeah so beyond being an author, you're an entrepreneur, <laughs> Olympic gold medalist, a mentor, ambassador, all those things. How do you like manage all of that? <laughs> um, you know, some, day, some days or weeks are easier or harder than others. I Honestly, without being cheesy, I think it mm -hmm. is from swimming. Yeah. Um, I think as swimmers, we we're asked to balance a lot and mm -hmm. wear a lot of different hats. And, you know, there's a demand to do well in the pool. And then there's the demand academically yeah. and then socially and mentally, spiritually. I mean, there's a lot of different aspects that go into it while you're training. So mm -hmm. I think training at the level that I did really allowed me um, to learn time management and knowing how to balance things out and um, just what needs mm -hmm. to be tackled each and every day because you can't tackle everything mm -hmm. in one day right and you couldn't as an athlete either you s focused on and specialized certain things and that's what I'm trying to do right now yeah totally <laughs> so Golden Glow check it out we'll put the a link to check to buy the book thank you and let's talk about some of your other entrepreneurial yeah. pursuits. Laguna okay. Finco. Yes. What else you got going on? I love Laguna Finco. Huge shout out to Laguna Finco. So I've been with Laguna for about two years now. Um, very organic way how we came together. Um, this is an incredible, unique training fin. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna say it's the most comfortable fin on the planet, and we stand very uh, true to that mm -hmm. and very firmly believe in that. Neoprene foot pocket, adjustable. I mean, I do you remember like how bad your feet would hurt and cut up? Like I yeah. think back when I was training in high school, like I had the worst cuts on my feet. I remember trying to get ready to like go to dances and I couldn't wear my heels because yeah. like my fins, these fins are so comfortable. They don't cramp up your foot. And that's what a lot of people are telling us is that they feel like they're staying in the water longer mm -hmm. because they're more comfortable in the fin. Yeah. Um, and for me too, what that's I think awesome. is so surreal about these fins that you can do all four strokes. Yeah. So this is the first fin that I feel like you can really truly do breaststroke in. Ooh. Like when I put this fin on, cause I don't really like breaststroke. I mean, I just, it's not my thing. But when I put these fins on, I want to swim breaststroke. And yeah. it just really, 
captures that power and the finish of the kick. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's what I needed when I was an IMer. That's where I struggled was my brush stroke. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if these ones would have been around when I was training, it would have been so helpful. Yeah. But as you know, the power of your kick for brush stroke is like 80% of your it's stroke, solid. right? You need that. <laughs> so this wide. fin, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this fin is just, it's been instrumental um, in the swimming community. Like you said, it's a startup, so we're grinding hard, but we truly believe in it, and we're trying to stay, you know, within our, there's only three of us that are like grinding on this project, and awesome. um, you know, we're worldwide, and we're really stoked and proud of the project that we have, and we have goals and ambitions for the next one, and the Kid Fin, and um, we're really excited, and we're, in, I mean, I'm in Southern California, right by the beach, I'm in Newport Beach, so we have that demographics of starting from ocean to pool is our yeah. thing, too, because a lot of the body surfers love it, a lot of open water swimmers like it, we want to get into the lifeguard community, the junior guard community, um, so we'll, hopefully a lot of potential for us. Right on, right on. So we'll also link the yes, Finco in you. the description. So tell us, uh, as an Olympic gold medalist, uh, you know, something like 10 or more international medals, wh what was it like going through that journey? And I guess reflecting back on it now, maybe, you know, a decade later. Sure. I mean, I feel like I appreciate or realize more what I accomplished at this point in my life mm -hmm. than I did while I was doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like while I was in the, in, in, the grind you just grind right and you're hustling yeah. and you're pushing yourself and you know you're supposed to go to the meets and you're, you're supposed to win medals and you're, all your hard work pays off and I don't even think it was until about like the 2016 Olympics and I was done after 20 or 2008 I don't mm -hmm. think it really sat in until 2016 when I was at the Olympic trials when I was in a live NC host and I was interviewing people for deck pass live yeah. where I was like wow this is pretty surreal um knowing what I accomplished and Honestly, writing the book made me mm, really, reflect. yeah. And yeah. you know, I kept a journal while I was at the 2000 to 2004 Olympics and having to go back and read mm -hmm. what I was thinking as a 17 year old or a 21 year old and what I felt like after my first race in 2000 where I got fourth and I was expecting a medal. And I, I wrote that I, I felt like I let down the country. Mm. Like that's pretty heavy, wow, deep stuff at 17 years yourself. old, right? Wow. And I was like, now I look back at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so silly. Like I got fourth when I was 17 years old in the 400 I am. In the world. So, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, it's, it's um, something I'm proud of, you know, and for a while I wanted to run away, kind of far away mm. from it. I wanted a break from the sport and I wanted to do something different. And it's almost like I didn't embrace it. I didn't own it. And I wanted to cover like my swimming shoulders and mm. um, I wanted to be somebody else and, you know, again, it wasn't until I found the Jesse Reese Foundation and the whole mission, if you're not aware, the Jesse Reese Foundation is Team Nigu, never ever give up. We're all about spreading hope, joy, and love to children fighting cancer um, and talk about keeping things in perspective, right? So, you know, you can, nobody can just like walk into a children's hospital. Like there has to be a protocol for that. Yeah. So honestly, it's like my Olympic gold medals that gives me like that street cred mm -hmm. to be able to go in with the foundation because you want to encourage and motivate and inspire these mm -hmm. children and bring your medals. Um, so that's why I feel like I started really owning what yeah. I had accomplished and what I've done and being a two-time Olympian and four-time medalist. Um, I don't think I really took it in until probably about 2012. Yeah, and, and so you mentioned the foundation. I, I think I read somewhere over 100, 150 hospital visits. Yeah. What, what, what is that like? And what does that mean? It is so special. And every time I do it, it never gets old. It's always a priceless experience. Um, I think we, we are trying to do the math. I think I've done close to 170 hospital visits 170, now since 2012. Wow. Um, it, it's it's hard for me to put into words. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my best friend Cammie's here with me today. And, you know, she's seen me through this whole foundation the whole time. And even trying to explain to her. And then she got to do a visit with me. It's like, I think then you really get it once mm -hmm. you're actually really there. And even like my husband, like he hasn't been able to do a visit with me and he loves hearing about it, but I don't even think he mm -hmm. would really get it until he comes. Uh, but that's yeah. another thing that I think swimming really built me for because mm -hmm. people are like, how do you do this? Like, how do you go in? And this is so sad. Like, don't you cry? Yeah. And I feel like swimming builds this tough exterior. Mm -hmm. uh, totally. But then, you know, we have a soft heart. So you have to mm -hmm. be brave and strong on the outside. You can't walk in and start crying and you're, it's, you're there and it's not about you. Mm -hmm. You know, you're there to inspire and encourage and to bring joy. So if you can just keep it together and hold it together and yeah. just know that you're really brightening days, it, it's, it's truly special. That's awesome. You mentioned 2016 trials, and I, yes. I remember that with Brendan Hansen. Yes. I remember watching this. I'm like, oh, this is really entertaining. Like, I was, Thank you. I was, I was getting, it was my first trials experience like that. Okay. So it was cool to see, and you guys really ran the show. What's it been like? <laughs> I mean, you've worked at NBC. You're working with USA Swimming. Yes. On you know, all the nationals and all that good stuff. What's that like? Um, 2016 was literally one of the best weeks of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I just got reconnected with Brendan, was that three weeks ago at Nationals? I hadn't seen him in a while, and mm -hmm. we were still reminiscing about it. And it was just so special to be 
once a summer and then back on the pool deck at such a different capacity. A different way, yeah. And I have to tell you, like Brendan and I didn't even really know what we were doing until the night before. Because when I got <laughs> asked to do it, they were like, were, MC. yes, <laughs> like mean. live, like they ran the whole show and like leading cheers in the stadium of a sellout crowd. Trivia. Yeah, trivia <laughs> and like that. joke. It was crazy. And like literally when we first got asked to do it, it was like, hey, will you interview the athletes as they make the team? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And then the I night, it was more than that. Yeah. And then the <laughs> night the before, they're like, okay, level. at five o'clock, you're going to welcome everybody. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> And my heart was pounding. I was more nervous for those Olympic trials than I was for my own Olympic trials that I was competing in because yeah. I felt prepared for, you know, 2000, 2004. Um, 2016, I had no idea what I got myself into, but I, I love Brendan. I go so far back with him. I think that's what's so incredible about our sport or sports in general, mm -hmm. just the bonds and the relationships yeah, so that you make with people. Community. Yeah, definitely. And he's so sarcastic and dry and obviously my <laughs> personality. So just working together and we're hoping we get to do it again. We don't know yet. We haven't heard much about trials this coming year other than they, they say it's going to be bigger and better than ever and I'm just yeah. so excited for the sport and for Omaha and um, it truly is like a really really incredible swim mate. It's amazing it's similar to the Olympics but just the United States it's in insane. Regard. like Brendan's like I think this is the best meet in the world like I mean you it's so hard to compare anything like it the yeah. the the tension and the electricity and the excitement and the show that they put on yeah, it's just spectacular it yeah uh, what do you think about the sport of swimming moving forward? So International Swim League, yes. uh, you're part of that. Yes. Where do you see the future of the sport at 10,000 foot? I think it's going in the right direction. I sure do. I mean, I'm really proud to be a part of ISL. Um, again, it's a startup, so mm -hmm. that's scary in itself. It and you, you got to figure it out. It out every day. I'm, you know, there's a new thing to figure out, which mm -hmm. um, has been a challenge for me, but also something that I have um, embraced. Um, but I just don't want to let anybody down. So I think. You know, the concept of this ISL is to give our athletes more financial opportunities and a way to elevate their brand and their portfolio mm -hmm. and their visibility. Yeah. And with that becomes more opportunity with brands and endorsements and sponsorships. Like, I don't think people realize that these athletes, a lot of them have to get a job just so they can train for the Olympic trials yeah. or the Olympics. That's hard. There's, Training is a full time it job. It is. <laughs> you know, and these people are like, oh, I got to do swim lessons. They're going to go to swim clinics. And it's like all that takes from... All that takes from your training. Yeah. So it's like we're asking our best athletes in the world or in our country to train for the Olympics, but then figure mm -hmm. out somehow to make an income. So I really yeah. hope that this is a step in the right direction. I already see it just with the amount of money that FINA put up at their last um, swim meet for the prize yeah. money. I feel like that kind of rippled from the ISL. Like, like yeah. hey, this company. Well, this, everyone's trying to want to Yes, so it's scaling and that's effect. fine. <laughs> and it's competitive, right? It's sport. So if, if that's something that ISL has already been a part of, I, I'm stoked on that. So um, I, I'm very honored to have a, the position of GM of the DC Trident. And I'm excited of, for my team and the roster that we built and the staff mm -hmm. that we put together and the culture that I'm trying to develop. i um, trying to get sponsors. So if anybody wants to sponsor DC Trident, hit me up. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to DC actually straight from here and just trying to put some, you know, lay the foundation into this amazing community because DC really does embrace swimming. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the trials and interviewing athletes in yeah. USA Swimming. What's it, what's it like? I feel honored to be interviewing you and oh, you get to thank interview. You all the big guns. Yeah. What, what's that like? You know, for me, it's um, it's incredible to have that type of relationship with the athletes. And I will say in 2016, I didn't feel as connected as I do now, mm -hmm. uh, just with my involvement with Deck Pass Live and Taper Time. And I've been doing the Golden Goggle red carpet shows. Yeah. And then obviously with DC Trident and last year as a part of Swim, um, swim Squads with USA swim Swimming. Squads, yeah. So I feel like if I had the opportunity, I would even feel more comfortable or connected and in the know, yeah. um, but it is, you know, I've always said this, I think swimming has some of the most classy, humble, intelligent, mm -hmm. uh, entertaining yeah. athletes. And it's yeah. been a true pleasure for me to get to know them over the last three, four years. Um, and, and, and I'm proud of the sport and I'm proud of the people that um, come out of the sport. And I think on a whole, the swimming community, like the alumni mm -hmm. and stuff, they want to give back and they want to be a part of it and they want to be a part of the growth. And you can see that with the um, national team alumni events that we're doing at nationals. And, you know, there is such a community sense to it. Uh, but I'm just, I'm proud. I'm proud to interview the athletes mm -hmm. and for me, you know, when you're interviewing somebody, it's not about you, right? So for me, my goal is for the audience to get to know these athletes better. Yeah. Like how how can we get to know this swimmer more? Because then you're going to root for them more, right? Yeah. You're like, Build oh, yeah, them. exactly. And you're like, oh, I remember he said this one thing. Oh, so funny. Or Nathan <laughs> Adrian loves his cat. Like, I didn't know he was a cat guy. And yeah. I was like, I love cats. And I was like, you know what I mean? Check like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so that gives you something that you feel like relatable, connecting mm -hmm. to the athletes, get them out of their shell because swimmers don't get a lot of visibility or recognition. Yeah. They're not household names. So if I can help in any way elevate that, I'm really excited mm -hmm. too. You mentioned Golden Goggles. Yes. So this is an event that like I watch it on live stream. Yeah. A lot of people 
in USA Swimming, they watch it live stream. They, they might never go to that. Yeah. What's it like behind the scenes? Like, do you have any funny <laughs> stories outside um, of when USA Swimming is filming it? Yeah, I mean, it's not very organized. Oh, really? Um, it's it's pretty organized. As far as, like, the red carpet goes, because that's the part I do. And they're like, okay, uh, you guys, here's yeah. your schedule. But this is why it's so cool why it's not organized. Uh -huh. So these swimmers, I mean, they are coming from all over the country, yeah. right? But they have this awesome summer together. They have this great team bond. And then they're like, okay, everybody come to the Golden Goggles. And, okay, you're going to be on the red carpet at 5 and you're gonna be 515 you're gonna be 520 so Colton and I kind of know the itinerary yeah. and who to and we kind of have it like in our head or cue cards yeah. I mean a lot of these swimmers look completely different let's be honest from Captain <laughs> Goggles and getting all yeah. dollars yeah so I'm like okay who is this but they're so excited to see each other that yeah. the, they're so delayed they're so lost they're on the wrong side of the red carpet they're chatting over at the bar like and I'm sounds like a good time yeah it's, so it's, <laughs> it's a good reason why it's not organized because I think that's so, like again they race against each other they're competing all over the country but then they get together and it's really a tight-knit group um, so Colin and I are just like hey yep yo come over here just come over here you know there's like total pure chaos which I'm trying to be better about because I'm a very like organized structured person mm -hmm. um, and like when people throw me curveballs I'm like <gasps> so I'm learning <laughs> to be better like on the spot and just go with the flow Sometimes. and yeah and the well, fact that I get to know these swimmers better now that makes me more comfortable and having some type of rapport with them that you can just pull people whenever they're ready to be on there but no I mean the Golden Goggles was incredible that uh, honestly it's, it's hard to recognize some of them you know it's mm -hmm. an opportunity to them for them to finally like be out of their swimsuits and cap and goggles and um, I was a part of it since the beginning. They did the first one after two, two, 2004 Olympics in New York, and to see how it's evolved and what it's an brilliant. amazing fundraiser it is for USA Swimming, I, it, it's, it's great to be a part of. Yeah, for the 12, 13, 14, 15 year old that look, looks up to you and inspired <laughs> by you, and they're so energized by seeing all of your energy, what advice do you have for them <laughs> Um, for whatever level they may be. Yeah, I mean, I, I know this is very cliche and it's something that you hear all the time, but it really ties into um, my story and then also the Jesse Reese story. The whole motto, the, the foundation is never ever give up or, mm -hmm. or need you. And it's just ironic because that is the foundation's motto, but that was my that was my swimming career. I mean, yeah. I made my first Olympics at 17 and I did pretty well. And then from my first Olympics to my second Olympics, I mean, I went through everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, injuries, illness, car accident, um, the freshman 20, I was like freshman 25 pounds that I put on. Um, you know, there's just a there was a lot of obstacles and a, I call mm -hmm. them speed bumps that I had to overcome, mm -hmm. um, and just never giving up. Just led to a 2004 that was just incredible. It was like the most amazing swimming of my life and something that was just like so surreal. I mean, yeah, I didn't win like four gold medals, but like I won a medal of each color and I went all best mm -hmm. times and a world record and an American record. Which a year and a half before that, I didn't even know if I was going to keep swimming. Mm -hmm. um, so just just knowing that. I, the juice is worth the squeeze and yeah. it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be flawless. I mean, look, I, I came out to Michigan, trained the hardest I've ever had in my whole entire life to make my third Olympics and it didn't happen, but life goes on and there's more yeah. to life after that. And yeah, you Keep know, it's moving. just like, there's a reason for everything. And as long as you just kind of know what it is, it's going to make you happy. You go for it. Yeah. You mentioned the community and your friends. Like, is there any shout outs that you want to give? Oh to? my gosh. <laughs> there's just so, I mean, first and foremost, like my parents, like they're yeah. just like incredible human beings. <laughs> beans I say I have the best swim parents because they know nothing about swimming you know my mom Perfect. and I like yeah my mom was like more concerned about finding me like the cutest bathing suit that like matched my cap there and you goggles go. you know it's like priorities yeah. right and then I had the most supportive um like my sisters my sisters are amazing and then you know I don't think coaches get enough praise mm -hmm. I mean I could not be where I am without them and just their belief in me like I thought I was gonna be a soccer player mm -hmm. like I literally was like I want to go to the world cup I could do the front uh front handspring throw in like I have skills and then my swim coach is like you know you're a really good swimmer you should I'm like oh I am you, you know right yeah yeah it worked <laughs> out pretty well and then we, we touched on it real quickly I mean just like your teammates and mm -hmm. it can't be who's here with me today and it, it just it's like a spiraling effect like She's been a part of my life since I was seven or 18 years old, and here I am, 36. Like that's from swimming. That's from our sport, you know. And we both went different directions with it, but it's just surreal, like how people come into your lives. And it's funny because where I live now, I mean, I have a very small group of friends where I live because all my friends are all over the country, oh, yeah. you know, because of the sport, which makes it fun when you're traveling so much. Totally. Um, but yeah, just amazing support through through USC because there's definitely a lot of a downtime I had, and and then the core group that we we had here at Michigan which is legendary I mean this was when Phelps was here with Eric Venn and Cleet Culler was here for a little bit and um, Christy Young and Peter Vanderkay and Davis Tarwater I mean I was swimming with icons like I know it's insane <laughs> right and I trained with those guys and then we had some of the females come over and 
just Coach Urbanchek was just like a just a huge part of my Keep swimming career. Keep it moving, <laughs> Keep it moving. and <laughs> talk about a legend. And just <laughs> when we were driving here, I'm like, oh, Zingerman's Coach Irby loves Zingerman's, yeah. and it's just um, it's been it was a it was a really amazing journey and just a lot to be grateful for. That's awesome. And with that, we'll wrap up this episode of the Ask a Swim Pro Show. Caitlin Sandino, check out her new book in the description and Laguna Finca. We'll yes. put it all in there. Thanks. We'll catch you guys later. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> Thanks.